guys this is Siddharth of SS Embedded World. Today I am gonna explain you the interfacing of stepper motor with Atmega 32 microcontroller. In order to implement this project you need to download the Proteus and AVR softwares. If you already have them it's cool you can do your simulation and program your controller. If not don't be sad we have done some videos on them. Just click on the card above on the screen and you will be redirected to them. In order to interface a stepper motor we need to understand some theory first. So now I will give you some introduction how to interface the stepper motor. A stepper motor is a special DC motor which rotates in discrete angular steps in response to a programmed sequence of electrical impulses. It is also known as a step or stepping motor. This is a stepper motor. There are three basic types of stepper motors based upon the rotor construction. They are variable reluctance type, permanent magnet type and hybrid stepper motor. The windings in a stepper motor are of two types. They are unipolar and bipolar. In unipolar, it only uses half of the windings during excitation and in bipolar, it uses the complete winding during excitation. Now, I will explain you what is meant by a step angle. It is defined as the angle which the rotor of a stepper motor moves when one pulse is applied to the input of this data. Its formula is given by alpha is equals to 360 by m into nr where alpha is the step angle, m is the number of stator phases, where nr is the number of rotor poles or teeth. Here is how a unipolar stepper motor winding looks and here is how a bipolar stepper motor winding looks. Here as you see in a unipolar stepper motor it also consists of a common in each and every winding and whereas in bipolar stepper motor there is no common present. Now I will explain you the working principle of a stepper motor. By energizing one or more of the stator phases a magnetic field is generated by the current flowing in the coil and the rotor aligns with the field. By applying different phases in the sequence the rotor can be rotated by a specific amount to reach the desired final position. As you see here firstly the phase A is excited then the rotor gets aligned to phase A. Then again the phase B is excited. Then the rotor gets rotated from initial position and gets aligned with phase B. Now again we will energize the phase A by reversing the current. So the rotor gets again aligned to it. Then we will energize the phase B again with reversing the current again and the rotor gets aligned to the phase B. This is how the process continues. There are two types of excitations which can be done for 90 degree step angle. They are single phase excitation and two phase excitation. In single phase excitation only one phase is excited at a time. We can achieve the step angles like 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 225 degrees and 315 degrees. In two phase excitation two phases are excited at a time and we can achieve the step angles like 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees and 360 degrees. Now I will be explaining you about the motor driver. Here we will be using the ULN 2003A motor driver. A motor driver is used to run a stepper motor with a microcontroller. The output voltage from the microcontroller is plus 5 volts which is not sufficient to drive a stepper motor. So we need to build a higher voltage in order to drive the motor. The higher voltage can be achieved by using a motor driver. Here are some of the features of the ULN 2003A. It consists of 7 Darlington per package. Output current is 500 milliamperes per driver and 600 milliamperes peak. Output voltage can be supplied up to 50 volts and output can be parallel for higher currents. Here as you see this is the ULN2003 motor driver. It consists of 7 input pins and 7 output pins and a common and a ground. Firstly the input pins 1 to 7. It consists of the 7 input pins of Darlington pair. Each pin is connected to the base of the transistor and can be triggered by using plus 5 volts ground. Ground is the reference voltage 0 volts and common used as a test pin or voltage suppression pin and the output pins from 1 to 7 gives the respective outputs of the 7 input pins. In this project we consider to rotate clockwise direction by using a single phase excitation and again rotate in anti-clockwise by using the single phase excitation. Then rotate the motor in clockwise direction using two phase excitation 
and again rotate the motor in anti clockwise direction by using two phase excitation these are the motor driver connections we have considered values to be loaded into the ports may differ according to the connections for clockwise direction by using single phase excitation these are the particular values to be loaded into the ports for 45 degrees it should be 0x08 135 degrees 0x04 225 degrees 0x02 and 315 degrees it should be 0x01 for obtaining anti clockwise direction by using single phase excitation we just have to reverse the values from 315 degrees to 45 degrees and we can obtain the anti clockwise direction for obtaining the clockwise direction by using two phase excitation the values for 0 degrees should be 0x09 90 degrees should be 0x0c 180 degrees should be 0x06 270 degrees should be 0x03 for anti clockwise direction by using two phase excitation the values of the clockwise direction should be just reversed from 360 degrees to 90 degrees you can calculate the values according to the connections now i will be explaining you about the algorithm we will be using we will first declare the port using ddr which is the data direction register and declare a while loop for continuous operation give the hex value to the port as per the operation required and provide the delay and go to again step 2 this is some brief introduction about interfacing a stepper motor the document is also available for you guys just click on the link below in the description now we are going to implement the logic in the avr studio and program our atmega32 microcontroller the code and simulation are also available for you guys the link is below in the description now i will be explaining you the code this is the code for clockwise using single phase excitation firstly we have included the standard input output which is the dot h file next we have included the avr input output dot h file then we have also included the util slash delay dot h file in order to use the delay function then we have defined the clock frequency as 16 megahertz this is the main code here we have declared the port c as output by giving it the value 0x ff here we have defined a while loop which is a continuous loop in order to make a while loop as a continuous loop you have to give one in the parenthesis firstly we have given 0x08 to port c then we have provided some delay and again we have given the next value and the process continues for the remaining anti-clockwise single phase excitation and clockwise two phase excitation and anti-clockwise two phase excitation the code is similar here as you see this is the code for the anti-clockwise single phase excitation and it looks similar there's the values which are going to be defined in the ports just change here is the code for clockwise two phase excitation and here is the code for anti-clockwise two phase excitation now we will build the code and see if any errors are there to build the code just press the key f7 or the icon which is present on the toolbar as you see there are no errors we have obtained the message build successful now in order to debug the code just press alt plus f5 or click on the debug icon which is present on the toolbar and you will find start debugging and break just click on it here's how the debugging space looks like now we need to add the breakpoints in order to debug to add the breakpoints just click on the left corner of the workspace like this and you can remove them in the same order now to view the output you can view them in the input output space if input output space is not docked to your workspace then click on debug then windows then you can find the input output view Yes, you need to dock them to your workspace. Now we will be debugging. In order to debug, just click on the play button. And you can observe now we have debugged this DDR line. Now as you see, we can see that DDRC has been changed to 0xff. Now again click the play button. In the first cycle, you cannot view the debugged value. So in the second cycle, you can view them. Now again click on the play button. Now here as you see the value in the port C has been changed to 0x08. Now again click on the play button. Now here as you see the value in the port C has been changed to 0x04. Now again we will click on the play button. 
Now here as you see the value in the port C has been changed from 0x04 to 0x02. Now click on F5 to continue. Now as you see the value in the port C has been changed from 0x02 to 0x01. Now again click on F5 to continue. Now as you see the value in the port C has again changed from 0x01 to 0x08. This is how the process continues. You can also view the breakpoints you have selected in the breakpoint space. You can check them and uncheck them if you want. This is how the debugging is done. Now in order to stop the debugging just click on the stop icon. Now we will take a look how the simulation of the stepper motor can be done in Proteus. In order to do the simulation we need 8 mega 32 microcontroller ULN 2003A motor driver and a stepper motor. Here the commons of the stepper motor are connected to plus 12 volts and the remaining 4 terminals are connected to the motor driver and the common of the motor driver is grounded. We can change the parameters of the motor by double clicking on it. Here as you see we can change the nominal voltage of the motor, step angle, maximum RPM and coil resistance and coil inductance. Here we have selected the nominal voltage as 12 volts and the step angle is 90 degrees. Here in this project we have used port C in order to interface the stepper motor. So we have connected the motor driver to port C. Now in order to run the simulation we need to select the hex file which can be done by double clicking on the controller. You can find the program file. Just click on the browse and select the hex file and click on open. Another way is to go to the AVR studio and in the solution explorer you can find the output files. If you don't have the solution explorer just go to the view and there you can find the solution explorer. Just click on it and you can dock it to your workspace. Here you can find the .hex file. Just double click on it. Then right click on the .hex file and you can find copy full part. Just click on it. Go to the simulation and here in the program file just paste it. This is how you can select your hex file. Now click on OK. Initially we are going to see the single phase excitation in clockwise direction. Now just click on the play button. Here as you see we have obtained initially 45 degrees. Then 135. 225. And 315 degrees and it continues. Now we will take a look at the two phase excitation in clockwise direction. Now just click on the play button. We have obtained 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees and 360 degrees again. The process continues again and again. Now we will take a look at the anti-clockwise direction single phase excitation. Now just click on the play button. Now as you see the stepper motor is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction. Now we will take a look at the anti-clockwise direction two phase excitation. Now just click on the play button. As you see the stepper motor will be rotating in the anti-clockwise direction. Here firstly these two phases are being excited, then these two, then these two phases, then these two phases. This is how the anti-clockwise direction by using two phase excitation works. Now just click on the stop icon in order to stop the simulation. This is how to interface a stepper motor using Atmega32 controller. Please like, share and subscribe to SS Embedded World and also click on the bell icon for further updates.